I, I was thinking about, uh, and I, let me get his name right, uh, Bertram Pincus. Bertram Pincus. There you go, a misanthropic dentist. I'm guessing the dentist side you had to fake, but I'm, I'm, I'm thinking the misanthropic side wasn't such a stretch for... Loved it immediately. <laughs> On the page, I thought, right, this is my role, right? Not just my role, but uh, I am like this person. Or rather, I wish... I would like him. I wish I had the nerve to say exactly what's on my mind. He goes around telling people exactly what he thinks of them. He wants to be left alone. He's this uh, curmudgeonly sort of loner. As you say, he's very misanthropic. He doesn't like people. He hates dead people. So, you know, his life is turned upside down when um, he can suddenly see these spooks. Um, but, um, I, I, you know, sort of like all those characters that are a bit wounded, and I played in with David Bren and Andy Millman, they're not bad people. They're, um, they're confused. They're misled, really. And uh, it, it's, um, I like the, the redemption in the film. It's one of my favourite themes. Again, we did it in the office, did it in extras. And uh, I, I like the fact that he, he realises that um, through, through you know, friendship and, and maybe the, the attention of uh, another human being for the first time in many years, he sort of realises that he's only hurting himself. He's only sort of missing out on, on the best aspect of life. It's not always the best policy to be brutally honest and right. Sometimes, you know, it's better to just bite your tongue. So, uh... Well, I was going to say, given the uh, profile you have, obviously, here, but then in the States, you're, you're adored for, 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 obviously, the office and the extras, and, and, and there's a real sense that you are a golden boy, and, and that... Uh, other side of that, though, you've got to deliver something, ultimately. You've got to sort of deliver on all that sort of great praise and all that promise. I'm wondering, this being your first lead role in a big American movie, whether you, you would allow yourself to be quite nervous before something like this, or whether you'd feel... Well, this no, script is worse I'm, than I'm I know not nervous, right. because if I'm happy with the product, I don't, I don't sort of care what happens, you know. I'm, I'm not doing this to be a film star. I'm not doing this to further my career. I took this film because it was irresistible. It was the best script I'd read in five years. I looked on the page, it was funny from page one. It was me, and that's really important. I was the best person to play David Brent, I was the best person to play Andy Millman, and I'm the best person to play Bertram Pincus. And of the, of the other hundred films I turned down, I was one of 50 people that could have played it, or they weren't that great, or I was busy. Um, but you make way for some things. Do you want to write and star in The Simpsons? Yes. I'll, I'll clear my diary. Um, do you want to work with De Niro for two days? Yes. Do you want to work with Christopher Guest? Yes. Do you want to shoot for six weeks on a really lovely, funny, old-fashioned romantic comedy in the Upper East Side of New York? Yes. Um, and I don't care what happens after that. Obviously, I did, the day it came out, read all 120 reviews. Oh, <laughs> Luckily, they're all good. It's so funny. I was reading and going, it's another good one. I was going, oh, my God, that's a, it's a brilliant one. Then I'm thinking, where's the bad one? That's the one that England's going to pick up on. <laughs> that's what I thought. I'm thinking, there's going to be one bad one, and that's the one that's going to be in the papers. But they were all good. I'd never heard of Rotten Tomatoes or Metacritic before this film, and somebody sent me that, and they, 86%, that's the best reviewed film of the year, and it, start, it starts getting to you. Yeah. And that's what's dangerous, because if it had been bad, it would have been depressing. So you've got to, you've got to calm down, you've got to know that you know, it, you're doing it for you. And I always did do that with The Office, and then the second series, when they were waiting for it, and then the, then the Christmas special, where it was like, awaited. And you have to go, look, we're doing it for ourselves, don't second guess anyone. We do it with extras. And some people are going to be disappointed. Some people probably hated the office Christmas special. Some people probably hated the extra Christmas I, I know they did, but we didn't do it for them. We did it for me and Steve and like-minded people. And that's why we've done this film, myself and David Kep, have done the best, our favourite film. We've made our favourite film of the year. And uh, my, myself and Stephen made our favourite sitcom. You know. well, given that you, you are somebody who um, plainly cares deeply about what you make and how you make it and, and if it's good enough, and, and as you say, you, know, you don't want to go on to BBC One, you don't want to chase a big audience, you want to make sure you've got what you want well, to I make. Well, I don't want to chase a big audience. Right, that's what I'm saying. That's you don't the, want to go after I don't mind right. getting a big audience, you know. Yeah. Um, uh, but it, they, they wanted us to go on BBC One of the second series of The Office. Yeah. Now, it went to BBC Two. It got five million. It beat BBC One. So I want people to be able to at least press one button. I don't want to follow EastEnders and acquire six million because they're too lazy to turn over. I want people to at least find it, you know, and it doesn't matter what channel it is, there's nothing wrong with BBC One, mm. but I did feel initially this pressure, if it was started on BBC One, um, 
would they worry about it more? Would they let us get away with murder? And, you know, I, I must say, the BBC didn't interfere from day one. The, the producers weren't in the edit. You know, they'd let us do what we wanted. And I think I proved a point there. Um, and uh, I just want to be left alone. I just want to do my... And until no one's watching. Until everyone hates it. <laughs> and then uh, I still won't give up. I'll, I'll just do it for me. I thought we dragged out. It was about eight other questions, but a very quick one. You just, you just discovered that Louis Walsh is an arsehole. That took you a long time to... <laughs> I didn't how, say... How, how did I, it take you that long to realise that? I didn't that? say he what was an arsehole. I merely said... Uh, how would you feel if Louis Walsh made you look like a right cunt in front of 10 million people? That's better. That's better. Yeah. That's more. All he said to, a, he said to a, a guy who's totally okay looking, as an insult, you look like Ricky Gervais. <laughs> he meant it as an insult. <laughs> think of that. Rock Louis Walsh had a go at my lips. <laughs> He's a handsome man, you see. How do you make think of that? This is worse than when Dawn French called me fat. <laughs> I love you, Louis. <laughs> he gets enough stick off Simon. <laughs> 